today I'm going to teach you how to do keyframing. Well, what is keyframing? Well, keyframing is when you take a picture frame like this and put a key inside of it. Keyframing. <laughs> you don't like my puns, do you? I do make really bad puns. But ow! 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 <sighs> Can you please stop hitting me? I know my puns are bad, but seriously, no need for. Ow! Ow! Hello, today we're going to be doing keyframing. So as usual, we'll start up our new project. And then we'd start compositing. And as usual, we'll import our media. And today we're going to be using cartoon mouse and a bubble background. So first, with a cartoon mouse, let's say you wanted to move the mouse from the left corner to the right corner. You might have been doing this. So you trim you trim the layer into two, and then this layer, you move the mouse all the way over here. So when you play it, it looks like the mouse moved, but really it was just teleporting. What if you wanted something smoother, a smoother motion? That's when keyframing would come in handy. So go down to the transform tab, and then as you notice, there are five different settings down there. Opacity, which is how transparent the mouse looks. Anchor point, which is where the center or the where the data is the data point. Position, where you want the mouse to be on your video screen. Scale, how big or small you want it to be. Rotations, how many times you want it to rotate. So, we want the mouse to move from the left to the right. With that, we would use the position. So, we'll click this circle, and first thing you'll notice is the circle has been filled with a blue dot, and there's a blue triangle on the layers screen. So after that, we'll drag the timeline off to somewhere. And then, to make another triangle pop up, we'll just change the location of where the mouse is. And then you'll see this line. It, chain, it shows where the mass, mouse will travel in that time. So if we play it, the mouse, the mouse would smoothly travel across. And then, what if you wanted the mouse to get bigger while he was traveling across? Well, then you would click the scale, and then you'll notice another triangle pops up. So then we'll go here, and let's say we'll make the mouse bigger. So as you'll see, the mouse will slowly get bigger as he travels. Well, what if you don't want the mouse to slowly get bigger? You want it to get bigger right away. Well, there's this tool right here, which makes it stop. It doesn't get bigger until the end, and then it gets automatically bigger. Also, it worked with this, too. So make that the square. And then it just pauses until it reaches the data point that on the timeline, and then it automatically like, teleports there. It gets bigger. And what if you also wanted the mouse not travel just to one place, but to two places? That means we'll just drag it again, and there'll be another data point that popped up on the layer screen. And if we watch it, the mouse would travel around these three data points. So what if you want the mouse to rotate too? We'd click the rotation one. And then we'd find somewhere else, like let's say here, and we'll change the size and then we'll see that the mouse rotates when it goes. Or you might want to rotate only at the end again. So basically just click this. 
and then watch it play out. And once it reaches this data point, I'll rotate. And then what if you wanted it to kind of fade and disappear? So then you click the opacity. And then you'll find some data point and change opacity. Let's say we want him to fade away as he travels. So you can see the mouse gets dimmer and dimmer until it disappears. And that's about it with moving with, with images. Well, what if you want your background to move and things? We'll do that next. Usual, open our new project. And this time, instead of keyframing and moving pictures and positions, we're going to change the background and keyframe with effects. So first, we're just going to use this nice bubble background. And drag it on here. So first, if we want this to move, how do we make the background change? So first, we got to give it some space to move, so we'll drag it wider. And then, as usual, we'll drag down Transform and click the position. So this is our position beginning. Then move it to a different time frame and move it again. And as usual, you'll see these lines get being created. And that just shows the movement of your picture or thing. So if we scale to fit, go back to the beginning, you can see it nicely move and looks like the background is changing, which is pretty cool. So then, if you want effects on keyframe effects, you're going to do something different. So here's our video background picture. So let's use the bulge effect. Drag it on here. Now there's this nice bulge. Now if we go controls, bring this down, you can see these all have circles, which means we're able to keyframe it. So let's click the bulge and drag it down to here. So it looks like it's inverted. And then after a little while, we'll bring the bulge all the way up. And then if you play it, you can see the bulge getting bigger and bigger. And how about let's also bring the radius up. So in the beginning, we'll make it radius, radius, sorry, radius, zero pixels. And then we'll drag it all the way up. And after that, you can watch the bulge get bigger and bigger. And then there's plateau, which is how flat it gets later on. So, how well, let's make it 52%, 0% beginning, and then 52% here. So now, if you play it, you can see the bulge getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. So then, not only we can do keyframe with bulge, how about let's get, uh, let's see. Let's get a light flare. So we drag it on here. And we have a light flare right here. What if we want the light flare to get bigger or more intense? We'll do as we always do it. So first let's bring the intensity all down. Then we'll click the keyframe. And we'll drag the time on the screen. Bring let's bring it all the way up. So when we play it, the Intensity will get higher and higher. Let's say we also want the scale to get bigger. So first it's going to be at nothing. And then we're going to bring it up all the way. So then it's this big nice bright flash afterwards. And then there's different flare types. And you can explore this all yourself with color changes. And changing rotation, size of it. Basically, there's a lot of things you can tweak to it. So, those are two different effects you can keyframe with. There's a, a lot more effects you can keyframe with, but I'm just showing you some. So, that's about it to basic keyframing. And, of course, thanks for watching and like and subscribe.
So, uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And also, my beloved camera is taken away. So I'm using an iOS camera right now. And notice something different? Probably not. Eh, nothing big. But I got contacts! And it's like impossible to stare at screens right now because it's so fuzzy. But anyway, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.